Hello everybody, welcome to the latest episode of Ava Chats. We are still celebrating Ava Gardner's centennial birthday. This is a year-long celebration. We've been having a great time and we've been having several special guests with us. And today we have a couple of special guests again. I'm Linnell Siebold, I'm the Executive Director of the Ava Gardner Museum. And today I'm joined by Laura Stocker. She is an honorary board member of the museum and she's also our social media strategist. And a very special guest with us today is Dr. Annette Bohenick. And Annette has written a couple of books. Um, they are titled Hometowns to Hollywood. We've got volume one and volume two. Just so you know, Ava Gardner's in volume two. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's really actually a really interesting book because it talks about the um, hometowns of these classic stars that still celebrate these stars and their legacy. That's what I think is so interesting about this book is it's it's very different. So I'm going to talk, we are going to talk to Annette a little bit about the books and what uh, what's in them and also kind of what gave her the idea to get started with this. So welcome yeah. Annette, we're super happy to have you with us today. Thanks so much. And I've really enjoyed getting to know you these last few days. Um, I really do want to know how, what made you come up with this unique idea and way of presenting our classic stars? Yeah, well, uh, obviously I'm someone who has been very passionate about, about classic film in general, just ever since I was little. It was something that has always captivated me and caught my eye, and it's an interest that has only grown over time. And um, I've always been eager to look into this era and to just do our filmography uh, and that golden age period in particular. So from the silent era through roughly the 1960s, that's where my interests lie. And the hometowns uh, aspect really came to be, I think, when I was around the time when I was in undergrad at that point I was starting to travel and present some of my research um, unrelated to, to films though but um, throughout different places and points of interest in the country and being the film fan I am as I would travel the question was always in the back of my mind wondering who else was from here or whose path may I have crossed with <laughs> from old Hollywood had I arrived here maybe several decades earlier or a century earlier and uh, I remember one of my first trips was uh, in Augusta Georgia and I was looking through the hotel lobby brochures and I came across the Oliver Hardy Museum uh, brochure and I thought that was such a cool thing uh, once I finally visited the museum uh, to see just how the community and people of different ages came together to honor this person this home town hero from long ago and uh, and really just pay tribute to him. So it was a fascinating collection to see and the other part of it that was so interesting to me was seeing how some of these uh, hometown museums kind of promoted one another uh, as well. So I kind of started to learn that a bunch of these other hometown museums existed too and it became just a passion for me to uh, go visit some of these locations and explore them further. And uh, for me, I would generally just photograph them and visit for my own personal enjoyment and uh, share all of that on my personal Facebook page. And this was about in 2013 and some of these places weren't being heavily photographed necessarily too. So um, I felt like I was kind of building some of that online content and just sharing with like-minded friends too mm -hmm. who are also interested in the era. <laughs> and uh, it kind of of grew for me. I kept visiting these places and amassing photos and I wanted to share this interest beyond just my personal Facebook page. So I started a blog, uh, hometownstohollywood.com and uh, just started posting my pictures there and writing about my visits. And that has grown over the past 10 years to uh, beyond just the, the blog, but to also a lecture series that I do in person and virtually, um, the books themselves uh, as well. And it's been just such a fun way for me to connect with fellow fans of classic film. That is great. I love that. Uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, me, uh, me too. You know, you and I have been friends for a while now, and I was so thrilled uh, in 2021 when you reached out and said, I finally have coordinated it where I can make a trip to North Carolina <laughs> to the land of Ava. Can we yes. meet up? And um, I was delighted to host you and, and, and show you around to a few North Carolina sites, which we'll get yeah. into oh, yeah. some other spots that we've, we've tre uh, trekked together. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it is so fun because I'm very much like you. I grew up loving classic film, being very passionate about it, and wanted to find a way to kind of continue that, um, you know, the love of that and see how towns were celebrating. So when I travel as well, I'm just like you. Yeah. Who, who's from here? Where can I go see? Is there a you know, a house, a gravesite, a museum, or some other way that this a historical marker, right. that this community is honoring it. And what I love about your work is 
you know, yes, you've had a chance to go to a lot of different museums and landmarks and see collections and all of that, but you're also highlighting stars who maybe aren't getting that kind of focus where there may just be, you know, this is where this person lived or grew up. There's no marker to them necessarily, or this is where they're buried. And, you, you know, you're paying uh, tribute to these stars and kind of helping folks, you know, find where they, where they were from and learn, get some insight from that to see what their world was like growing up to shape them into the stars that we love. Um, so I think that's really interesting that you're, you know, it's, it's educational, but it's also part travel log. And it's a great way if you're passionate about this kind of thing to be able to go, well, where's Annette then? <laughs> that I can, oh, yeah, I didn't know. Randall Scott was from here. You know, that kind of thing. So I think that that's really fun and a really great way to kind of present this information that is truly unique. And I think, you know, this, it's both a passion project, but it's also something that's given you an opportunity, like you said, to connect with all sorts of folks and to travel, not just throughout the country, but you've been in other countries as yeah, well doing yeah. this. Uh -huh. So I think that's great, and I love how you've expanded, and I'm so happy that Ava um, has made this latest edition yes. of, of <laughs> the time. Yeah. You know, so when we you know talk about this, I know you've been to numerous again museums and seen collections and stuff. You know, we're always interested as those of us um, involved in the behind the scenes part of the museum of the Ava Gardner Museum. How do we kind of you know what is what has been your experience coming here and seeing the land of Ava and how the town of Smithfield and the the county kind of promotes and supports and, and remembers her. How does that kind of compare to some of your other experiences? Yeah, well, Ava's one of the lucky ones, I have mm -hmm. to say, too. I mean, her story is so vibrant and it's celebrated, I think, so well here. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's a very well-preserved legacy, one that I think uh, is, is poised to continue on beautifully. We, so. we hope so. We, we, <laughs> yes. If we have anything to do with it. We'll right. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it, just in terms of, like, geography, too, I think we're also, like, one of the lucky cases, too, where it's not far from us where she was, like, born where mm -hmm. I mean the, the museum itself is a gorgeous tribute there's a lot of beautiful artifacts and things that are well preserved and just in very good hands here mm -hmm. and uh, another portion of it too is well um, we, we also have her grave site here and, and many other points of interest but another big I think proponent for her legacy is that you also have family around who mm -hmm. still very much cares about Ava Gardner and that in and of itself is also a rarity we're also lucky to have that family that uh, cares about the legacy and wants to be a part of continuing that legacy and letting it thrive so that's also just very uh, refreshing to see and uh, yeah uh, with these travels too I mean it's fair to point out too not every star has a museum in their mm -hmm. honor or a full-on festival I mm -hmm. think that's that's great for, for Ava's legacy in some cases it's harder finding out like what still exists in terms of places and points of interest I think by far many stars don't have the museum or on the film festival in their honor and I have to look for other things like maybe a childhood home that still stands or a birthplace or maybe something a little more indirect like like a statue tribute or mm -hmm. sometimes the intangible like maybe they set up a scholarship fund before they passed mm -hmm. or or in some cases everything is raised and I just have to go to Ancestry and look for <laughs> addresses and point to an empty lot or a yeah. parking lot and say well that yeah. that was relevant <laughs> at one point so uh, it's it's interesting to see too I think um, how how these legacies are still being honored and in what types of ways there's so much variety I think in terms of how they are being remembered um, and again Ava being one, one of the lucky ones certainly and I think COVID and the pandemic certainly affected and shook up a lot in terms mm -hmm. of museums and tributes and there are stories too I've followed where there were little tributes like childhood homes and minor statues and plaques that have since been raised to make way for like chain restaurants oh, or yeah. parking lots yeah. again. So that's always disappointing to run into that mm -hmm. end of the, the story too. But thankfully, that's not Ava. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, no. Uh, survived so. through when you first came when we yeah. first met, when I first met you it was when the pandemic was still uh, a little in place. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. At the time, I was. Oh, God, right. I hope we make it through this. Oh, gosh. Yeah. But, you know, with all, all of our wonderful followers and the people yeah. that love Ava that don't work here and come to us every year and help support yeah. us, 
Thank you very much. We made it. Yeah, and the, I mean, the festival itself, too. I mean, that that's a, a wonderful thing. I, I realize how much work that is to even, like, fathom, like, putting that together. So kudos to, to you Thank and you everyone so involved in that. Uh, and it's it so It takes fun. a village. It certainly does. And yeah. another village. Yeah, and a county. Yeah, and all the villagers' spouses and friends and all of yeah. that. And to put up with all of yeah. that. <laughs> very much so. And I think that that's a testament to why Ava matters and the impact she's had on so many people people and just as a first time festival attendee too it's been fun to see uh just people celebrate that legacy people from all over the world since she truly was a global icon of her era and uh, to see the influence she still has uh, but again one that is very much tied to her hometown i think no matter how big she got she always celebrated her roots and that was always very much a yeah. part of her she prioritized a family home and that I think speaks for itself too yeah. and is very much a part of how she's remembered. And I think to, to that point that uh, impacts the passion we all have that are involved in this work mm -hmm. because yeah. we know that that she really cared. It's not like she left here and said, I don't want to ever go back and I'm tired of this place. You know, the town, the community, the family still lives, a lot of family still lives in the area. So there are these really strong connections mm -hmm. to making making this work. Right. And I think it really it helps relevant. too when you have something like this and you have a, a large group of people that are working towards that goal. It helps with the legacy of that person to live on in the um, in the truth mm -hmm. that we still talk about the truth instead of the rumors. And rumors will take over if there's nobody there to say you know. And so like, like Andy Griffith Museum and the Clark Gable Museum, certainly Lucy and Desi Museum, yeah. there's museums out there yeah. that have also protected mm -hmm. and, and preserved that legacy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the best things that we really do is that we are able to do that through the museum. If, if you don't have that, and you've probably run into this because mm -hmm. I find it interesting that some of the ones that you talk about don't have museums. Right. Yeah. It's a different. It's a different way of yeah. presenting, and that those rumors maybe can take over mm -hmm. the image of this person. And then pretty soon, you're not really hearing who the real person was. Right. You're hearing about the rumors, and that has taken us back because there's nobody out there to correct it. Yeah. So, did you run into a lot of that? Did you see when you were like visiting these areas that didn't have any specific museum or something set up? Did you find that maybe there wasn't so much of that preserving of the legacy going on? Well, yeah, in terms of the research side of it too, when there are none of these tributes or no people actively like advocating for, for these legacies, it is that much harder to, to find information, I think. Uh, that's where like my, my librarian side comes in and I really <laughs> to tap into like researching and looking at databases and trying to find just what exists because no one, like there's no museum staff pointing me to visit X, like these sites of interest or mm -hmm. take me on a heritage tour. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> so I, it's very much on me to figure out what that's going to look like, what I can put together and put together my own points of interest and mm -hmm. see what still exists. So um, yeah, it's, it's sometimes uh, it's, it's harder. It's uh, not necessarily discouraging because I mean, I think it, it can be done. I feel like that's where our film historians and film fans can certainly step up and try to advocate for these legacies. Right. But um, like I, I mentioned earlier too, I have run into some like sad stories where something did stand for so, so long and then it's gone or it's raised or it's mm -hmm. lost uh, because no one's caring for it. I think um, one of the sad stories for me is, is Dick Powell, who's covered in, in my first volume, so big like big singing star turned noir star <laughs> as well, uh, one of my favorites, and his uh, birthplace stood in his hometown of Mountain View, Arkansas, and uh, it existed for um, uh, quite some time, and I think it was like right around 2020 or just before, somewhere around that period, um, that the building itself, it, it wasn't in the best of condition, mm -hmm. but it was raised to make way for like a chain food restaurant, mm -hmm. but in addition to that, there was kind of like a, a homemade like bulletin board with just like printed out photos of him was kind of like uh, it, it was one of those cases where I'm like well there's something there and there was a plaque at one point mm -hmm. too and um, I haven't gotten a straight answer out of like where that is and if it has been relocated or if there are ever plans to do something with that but it's like one of those things where I feel like it's a shame and if you go on YouTube too there's a very sad like news segment too about uh, people asking the like locals who Dick Powell is and no one knows 
Yes. And oh, there's wow. there's a lot similar to that too. I think Cliff Edwards is another one, mm -hmm. like ukulele eye, like voice of Jiminy Cricket and mm -hmm. Pinocchio, and um, he was from Hannibal, Missouri as mm -hmm. well. And uh, there's a similar news segment there too, where they're asking about like. Who is the Cliff Edwards? And yeah. like, no one knows, but yeah. you might know the voice or when you wish upon a star, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But it's just that legacy isn't being celebrated, I think, in the same way. There's not as many people, I think, that are advocating and actively like caring for mm -hmm. that or preserving. Uh, so that's when, yeah, it's kind of on you to do, do the research. Yeah. And, and it's so it. interesting, you know, you talk about um, Pal, for example. I mean, yeah. That's a, it was a huge star. He huge was a star. Huge star. Yeah. Well known, you know, mm -hmm. long career. Yeah. And then to just sort of be, you know, forgotten. We're very, we're very fortunate that Ava is still in the consciousness. Yeah. Um, even though, you know, she passed away in 1990. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and her career, you know, she did just a little bit in the 1980s, but her career, mm -hmm. her film career was, you know, complete by the end of the 70s. So, uh -huh. you know, that she is still, um, you know, in people's minds yeah, and hearts. With we're, people and, we're, yeah. we're very fortunate that that, you know, and, and we're lucky because of things like Turner Classic Movies, yeah. because of the fandom around classic films and, um, you know, just folks watching these movies, learning about these stars and going around and traveling and advocating for, you know, uh -huh. that's a big piece of the work that you do. Mm -hmm. You really are an advocate. And, um, and I think that's very commendable in the, in that in that vein because you're doing you know these wonderful presentations like you said both in person and online that do deep dives into these stars and you get to go to different communities that and and you could go and do a power presentation if, if sure. the town <laughs> if the yeah. of that town want to know no wants, right? about their hometown star <laughs> right, you yeah, could right. do it and I think yeah. that's really really great the work because and you know we're passionate about these people and I've been with you to many like to let's go find a graveyard <laughs> and really find this grave or let's go find where these uh, folks worked at this grocery store yeah. and is it still yeah. there you know and um, we've done so we've had some fun adventures oh, yeah. and, and we have many more planned down the road I'm yeah. sure but um, you know but I think that's great to kind of see you know to preserve what's there and yeah. to document it even if it later is gone it's been documented and it's been yeah at least in some capacity pre presented yeah. in some way in some cases you really have to reach for some of these yeah. tributes tangible or not and yeah. it's a fun thing too i think with the, the hometown niche that i've kind of been like really <laughs> accepted and, and just delved into uh it's fun too to just hear like little allusions to like celebrity hometowns mm -hmm. too because um so often i think like we, we focus on what's been written about them like after the fact after yeah. they've become famous and moved to hollywood but it's fun too like picking up little allusions in some of like these old hollywood films too like um like in the Abbott and Costello movies, it's part of like, I think Luke Costello's shtick that he mentions Patterson, New Jersey, and like some of his <laughs> jokes, and there's like, that's his hometown, there's yeah. a statue, there's a community center, there's all this there. Yeah. And uh, even Dick Powell too, there's a, a movie, I think it's The Singing Marine, where he talks about his uh, uh, his hometown for his character, Mountain View, Arkansas. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. Like, so there's like, there's a lot of kind of like yeah. Easter eggs like that too well, that I pick up on. And that's too. really fun, <laughs> you know, kind of speaking of that, we, uh -huh. we thought we'd kind of share a little bit of some of the co-stars that Ava mm -hmm worked with that you've spoken about but also some of the fellow North Carolinians yeah and you know you've you've this is your third visits to my home state of North Carolina to, yes. to come <laughs> see me and hang it's out an and we, yeah, it's yeah. an annual tradition now no, 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 wait a minute. there's one that I was not a part uh, of yes and next mm -hmm. one you're you're she's gonna she's gonna come yeah. see us on the coast and we're gonna okay. do okay. some exploring so, yeah. that's right. <laughs> um, so that's next but uh, next summer but uh, but yeah you know we've had a chance to kind of do a little bit toward uh, the mountains and do a little exploring yeah. over there and we've done um, of course came to Ava when you came on your first trip we drove yeah. up to Mount Airy yeah. to see that's our friends at the Ava Gardner or the Ava Griffin Museum yes. excuse oh. me and um, you know that's another talk about Easter eggs that's another yeah. great example of a show where you're you know in the show they talk about the neighboring town of All where the time yeah Mount Pilot yes or, which is really know, Pilot, Pilot Mountain, Mountain yeah. and uh, got, you got to see that and yeah. of course there's a ref, there's one reference to a little local restaurant called the Snappy Lunch yeah and it's mentioned on one episode yeah. of the show and it's still there and yeah. still serving and they go to Raleigh a lot pork chop. they go to Raleigh and, <laughs> yeah. and Greensboro and all that yeah. in the show Raleigh is equivalent to New York yeah. Yes. It's massive, uh, but with a great YMCA uh -huh. for Bernie yes. to stay at. Yep. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, that's really fun that Andy yeah. himself trickled little references to yeah. that yeah. Um, in the show. And, you know, and there's, uh, that didn't really happen in Ava's career per se, but um, I recently found a, pro a 
photo of her where she's, I can't remember who she's with, but she's standing in front of a map of North Carolina. And it's really fun. And then, you know, her second husband, Artie Shaw, wrote a song called the Grabtown Grapple. That's right. right. Which yeah. she was from the little community of Grabtown. So there's some secondary yes. <laughs> yeah, references yeah. of that kind of thing. But I think that's really fun. So, you know, again, kind of talking about North Carolina, let's yeah. talk a little bit about the other stars that you've written about, either on your blog or in your two editions of your book. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, definitely in terms of Ava and some of North Carolina, um, Catherine Grayson is yeah. one of them. Yeah, another showboat star. Yes, co star as well. Uh -huh. So I, I can only imagine what great fun they had behind the scenes yeah. on set reminiscing uh -huh. about home. Yeah. Doing um, the Carolina Shuffle. Of course. That's <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and Joey Brown is another one, too, who's in, in showboat with mm -hmm. her. Not North Carolina. He was out of uh, Holgate, Ohio, but another one with some, some fun tributes uh, mm -hmm. they're in. And I know we uh, popped into some other locations and points of interest. Um, Kay Kaiser yes. is a big one. Kay's College of Musical Knowledge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, we, gosh, uh, we did Randolph Scott we as did. well. Um, I, that's a that's a post to come. Yes. I <laughs> so, uh, that's coming up. And uh, goodness, um, oh gosh, uh, Violet and Daisy Hilton mm -hmm. were another. So um, yeah, it's it's been fun. I think mm -hmm. there's quite a bit from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And of course, you you mentioned Andy Griffith. Was, mm -hmm. That was just such a treat for me on my so first fun. visit yeah. as well. <laughs> I thought I was only getting to to Ava. So that was uh, a whole bonus for me. <laughs> So, yeah, we're uh, very fortunate to have two yeah. really top-notch star-themed museums yeah. in mm -hmm. relatively close distance. Yeah, right. Randolph Scott was one where he, you know, he's he was in the Charlotte, Charlotte area, yeah. and there's really just a graveside and a home. But mm -hmm. the home is in wonderful shape. And it it's matches not, all the photos. It, it does. Yeah. It's not open to the public, but you can see that. Right. And then, of course, Catherine Grayson. Hers is limited. Yeah. Her, her tributes and yeah, I would yeah, love yeah. for them to do more for her sure. um, but you know but it is it is it runs the gamut you know yeah. it's it's really interesting to see and and I when I go to these places either with you or when I've gone on my own yeah. I come back and I think again just how fortunate we are yeah. of what we have here in yeah. Smithfield yeah. what the community has created here what the family has supported here and the collection that we've been able to build I mean it is it is a rarity. It really is. Um, and of course, like I said, Andy Griffiths is on par with that because of mm -hmm. the, the way that he himself was able to be involved with right. the museum and um, the town embracing. You know, it's so important when you, you have the community town. support. Mm -hmm. And we're very lucky that you know our festival is largely sponsored by community businesses and organizations and yeah. individuals. Um, and that makes such a difference when you have that, that connection and support mm -hmm. and encouragement there's been in the past uh, talk about how our audience is going to age out mm -hmm. and we won't have the, the large amounts of people coming to the festivals and people coming throughout the year mm -hmm. and that eventually it's just going to die out. I was told more than once that, you know, you probably five more years. And that was and that was eight years ago. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we are stronger than ever. And the point I am making yeah. is that Classic movies and classic movie stars continue to resonate and mean something to people. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just, just this morning, I walked out of my office and we have this huge picture of the anniversary, the M MGM anniversary get together. Oh, yeah. And all the stars are there. Yep. And they're talking, and, they, and these are younger women. These were younger women standing in front, and they were saying they just don't make them like this anymore. Aww, yeah. It's class <laughs> and elegance, and there's something to be said for in, embracing the past. Mm -hmm. And we learn from that. So I'm thinking when you're talking about, you know, you wish they'd do more for Catherine Grayson. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're going to come against somebody saying, well, but I mean, most of those people are pretty old now <laughs> but that doesn't matter that doesn't yeah. matter yeah we have a lot of people that are younger that for <laughs> instance <laughs> yeah. well, yeah. that are interested well, in this well and Annette you know goes to film festivals and film events and yeah. I go to film festivals and there's always people you know our age younger mm -hmm. and all of it it's run it's again a full range of people and there's yeah parents bringing their kids yeah. up in this. I know I was brought up with classic, you Likewise, were brought up with yeah. me, you know, and, um, and it's wonderful, you know, that's one of the, you know, I know sometimes social media gets a bad rap, but honestly, <laughs> that's to me been the most 
mm -hmm. wonderful part of social media. Yeah. Is you know, I grew up where I had was in a very small little town. I had one video store. I was in there renting Debbie Reynolds movies and Doris Day movies <laughs> and all of that and a car movies. And uh, you know, eight years old, can I can I rent? Yeah. You know, can I like, talk? I don't we know what it's about. Yeah, yeah. Totally. And I was yeah. like, I'm the only one. I'm the only one there, you know, I felt yeah. that way. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, along the way, made a couple friends in school. And yeah. It's like, I, you need to watch these movies. You would love Rock yeah. Hudson. Yeah. You know, and, and then my friends became fascinated by this stuff too. But then social media comes along and it is such, been, such a wonderful gift of connection. Yeah. And that's really how you've built your, you know, for lack of a better term, brand of yeah. Hometown to Hollywood Certainly. because of the social media connections and the mm -hmm. outreach and the way that you can connect with people all over the world. And we yeah. find that to be so true with the work that we do because especially the pandemic, which really forced a lot of organizations' hands and the ones that didn't embrace the the global world of the internet, yeah, you know, yeah. suffered consequences of that. We mm -hmm. launched this show during the That's pandemic. Right. Okay. We yeah, expanded, yeah. we yeah. redid our website yeah. during the pandemic. We, ex you know, expanded our outreach and we've seen the, the dividends of that through that work. And, you know, and I think that that's so, again, so commendable of what you've done is you've built a community around this concept mm -hmm. um, of people who engage with you regularly and, yeah. and are excited about your research and they're going to support you when you uh, talk about a lesser known, you know, sort of a lesser known star when they're going to be like, oh, I had no clue Jiminy Cricket's voice was done by this person. <laughs> right. you know, yeah. They're going to embrace it because you're, you're doing a good mix of like the really, really well known mm -hmm. yeah. and the lesser known and, um, and just kind of, you know, uh, helping, you know, adding people to go on that journey with you, which I think is really great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a pleasure. And yeah, it's always so fun to connect with people. I think like like you, there's a lot <laughs> you, like, from your story that resonates with yeah, mine yeah. too. It is, uh, that, that's one of the gifts, I think, for as far as the, the internet and social yeah. media is concerned. We say on the good side of the right, internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and thankfully, the classic film community is a really and fun one. now you're besties yes. with James Kelly. So. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, now I have a, a great uh, costume a recreator too. Yeah. 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 Well, and speaking, you know, that's one of our other festival guests and we have an yeah. episode of Ava Chats with James yes. Kelly. Yeah. We commissioned James to recreate two costumes, two lost costumes from Showboat. Yeah. And he also created a Catherine Grayson costume. Yeah. And he's, you know, certainly with on display now. On display yeah. now. Yeah. Certainly yeah. within, you know, the, the age range of those of us, you know, kind of in yeah. the um in this space and you know, a younger person who found Ava and found classic films and other stars and became passionate about it. Yeah. And, you know, was in, enamored by the costume side of things, right. yeah. and um, has honored. You know, he's he's deep, did a deep dive into Catherine Grayson to recreate her dress, and to Ava to re recreate the dresses yeah. for us. So, you know, it just shows you there's all sorts of people out there. It's just a matter of connecting the dots and finding them, right. and that's what the internet's been able to do. And I know that's again how you've really been able to build your presence. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. From just uh, my personal Facebook on to the, the blog and the, mm -hmm. the web, yeah, the, the books themselves and the, the lectures too. I mm -hmm. think that was one of those things too where um, it was fun having the background. Um, I, I worked in public libraries for 10 years, so I got a good sense of what programming looked like. And I thought a lot of my writing could translate into lectures, basically, mm -hmm. like multimedia fun presentations. Mm -hmm. And I was delighted to find an audience for it in person and then come COVID everything went virtual <laughs> and there was that pause as everyone kind of figured out what they wanted to do and how to go about doing it but that's when things really took off for me in terms of building even more connections mm -hmm. to places I wasn't able to visit as readily mm -hmm. um, so it, it was kind of a situation where like I kind of felt like the world was my oyster not only in terms of presenting but also mm -hmm. attending I, I sure. got to attend a lot of terrific yeah. talks and I delved into your uh, collections too mm -hmm. the virtual exhibits that mm -hmm. you were doing that mm -hmm. was so fun as mm -hmm. well um, and it was just uh, such an interesting period too mm -hmm. because I think a lot of creativity despite all the cons that happened during that time it really boosted I think a lot of creativity and connection during that period I think a lot of people were looking for connection and to keep their passions yeah. and interests going and um, certainly I think a lot of that happened and one of the, the perks there was well everybody's home but everybody's home everyone's yeah. around and eager to like network yeah. and collaborate and mm -hmm. a lot of good came out of that I think creative period and coming out of the pandemic 
music. Uh, it's it's been so fun to now build upon those connections mm -hmm. that I made virtually and go to some of these places mm -hmm. and reconnect with people and uh, just yeah, I think that the classic film community too uh, that, that I've been so ingrained in is just an exciting one. We're a passionate lot, aren't we? we? Are. <laughs> yes. Well, and again, you know, kind of, and I'm so happy to hear you know that you checked out our virtual exhibits. Yeah. You know that again, we we knew Ava was an international star. I mean, she lived. An incredibly full life, as you'll find out when you come to the museum or read our right. website yeah. or follow our social media. But, um, but you know, we had uh, we would have visitors come from all over the world. But expanding the outreach to them, giving them opportunities to engage with us, and and folks who may not be able to travel, who may not be able to come here, yeah. but they have so many ways now to experience the museum, mm -hmm. and we have things that are only available online only available through our website that are you know or exhibits that are only virtual exhibits yeah. that's been so rewarding to see that you know we we certainly owe a huge debt of gratitude to our collections manager Beth Navarez yes. for coming up with some of these concepts and really all of us brainstorming and saying you know how can we you know we want people to come to the museum but we want to take the museum to the people as well mm -hmm. we, we can't just do it one way or the other and that's how we're going to stay relevant and stay in the consciousness of people and continue to keep Ava's name yeah. and presence out there. And um, and it, again, it's just been a wonderful experience. And you know, and like like you, I mean, we go to these events, and it's like you feel you feel like it's old home week. But yeah. it's people maybe you've never met in person. It's like, oh, here's my great friend from Australia that I've never exactly. met. Exactly. So there she is. Social media friends, friends that I yes. meet for the yes. first time. Running in person. up and hugging yeah. real yeah. strangers, exactly. like virtual yeah. friends. Yeah. 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 Well, and it's the same with you. I mean, you and I had well, been at a Film Festival or two, the Turner Classic Movies Festival, uh -huh. I believe, but we had not met in person until yeah. you came to North Carolina. I mean, you, you've traveled here having never met me in person, um, <laughs> right. or any of the folks, you know, Linnell or Beth or anybody, yeah, yeah. and uh, took the risk. I'm glad it worked out. You came back <laughs> two more times and planned to return. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, um, but that just shows you, again, the depth of these connections that yeah. we can make and the friendships. I mean, you know, we're friends forever now, yeah. you know, friends in film and friends in person. And all yeah. of that, and it's just great. And um, again, that's that's what you're building with the work you're doing, and you're you're creating that bigger community. This book yeah. is a roadmap for it people. Totally, it is. a travel book. Yeah, yeah, and this is the perfect way for you to get an idea of what's out there, yeah. and then what you would like to go and see. And yeah. with the, you take a road trip and yeah. you find yourself yeah. in Wyoming or wherever, yeah. and you go to your book and you, hey, this is a great place, yeah. and yeah. it recommends it. <laughs> well, I mean, people recommend to her too. This, yeah. We had someone come in the museum today to say, yeah. you should cover this person. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the next thing I know, I saw Annette when I came into the museum with a like, like, where's this person? How <laughs> 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 I get there? Where can I go? But it's exactly. a great resource for the yeah. um, person that just really wants to do a little bit more. Mm -hmm find out a little bit more about a particular yeah. star mm -hmm. and what their life was like in their hometown. Yeah. Well, and in that vein, you know, I think it's very important that you let everybody know how to find you, where to find you. Sure. That's right. <laughs> what are your activities and how can they connect if they're interested in hosting you for an event or presentation? So sure. Give yeah. Us, give well, us the spiel. <laughs> yeah. So Hometowns to Hollywood is still a blog that I actively write for and maintain. It's been 10 years since I've done this, uh, as of 2023 in May. So um, that's great. Right. I've been thriving and, uh, to, to see that grow. But uh, yeah, hometownstohollywood.com is the, the blog or the travel website. Um, it's also a Facebook page, so Hometowns to Hollywood LLC on Facebook. Um, I'm also personally on Facebook, Annette Bohenek, and uh, you can find me on Twitter as well as uh, Home to Hollywood, so at home and the number two yeah. Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Had to shorten that for yeah. the social. <laughs> um, gosh, uh, and, and, and Instagram, Instagram is mm -hmm. the same too. It's Home to Hollywood mm -hmm. as well. And uh, the books themselves, uh, you can buy volume two through the Ava shop currently, um, yeah. the Ava Gardner uh, <laughs> gift shop. Uh, and then the other ones are on Amazon. Um, so volume one and two are ebook, paperback, and hardcover on mm -hmm. Amazon as well. So you could uh, look up Hometowns to Hollywood there. Um, I think that's those are the and if folks for want to, yeah. if folks are interested in hosting you or having you either do a virtual yeah. presentation or something in person, how do they reach out to you? Today? Yeah, feel free to reach out to me through any of those formats. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'll, I'll respond to them readily. I think uh, if you go to hometownsdohollywood.com, my email address mm -hmm. is listed. There's like an inquiries uh, portion of mm -hmm. the, the website, mm -hmm. and if you just want to see what's coming up, I have an events section. Mm -hmm. So it's hometownsdohollywood.com/events, and that'll show you all my uh, like book signings, in person uh, presentations, virtual. 
virtual presentations. I have a lot of virtual <laughs> uh, stuff, especially uh, around the holidays too. Yeah. If there's something that I can tie into a season, uh, <laughs> I do a lot. So a yeah. lot of like Halloween, Christmas, etc. So right. I mean, there's a lot of fun things in the pipeline. <laughs> so um, I'll do these general kind of themed presentations where I talk about maybe broadly a film genre or a particular theme that I'll explore in depth, mm -hmm. or I do what's like the profile presentations where I'll deep dive into one particular star and mm -hmm. talk about their life, career, and legacy today. Yeah. And I feel like there's no shortage of content. I yeah. feel like I'm, I'm so lucky to have found a unique way to kind of add to the conversation sure. in terms of classic film and yeah, classic yeah, film absolutely. scholarship. Well, and I love I love yeah. that idea of, you know, as we were saying earlier, you know, if there's a community out there who yeah. has a hometown person that either you featured or not, that they want to promote that and educate their community Mm -hmm. yeah. to really get something started or to lobby for a historical marker or something like that. What a great way to have you come yeah. in and do a presentation to yeah. that yeah. community. Get that that. Ball rolling. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think that's one. And I'll just add one other thing that you sure. do that's super yeah. fun on your website is you host blogathons throughout yes. the year. Yeah. And you've got yeah. one coming up and uh -huh. we're participating in it. Do you want to <laughs> yeah, tell right. everybody a little bit about that one for October? Yeah, so um, the blogathons, it's kind of like a marathon blogging event mm -hmm. where basically I invent other writers and bloggers to come write about a certain theme and I'll just link to everyone's posts and articles on my site. Mm -hmm. And the one for this year, this is my eighth one that I'm Ooh. doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's a celluloid road trip international edition yes. so this was an idea I had during COVID where I had celluloid road trip domestic edition which we participated so, in yeah, you we, also did we that covered show boat yeah, in that and talked about all of its one beyond Ava and yeah. Catherine Grayson it has a lot of other North Carolina oh, connections yeah. because Absolutely. it was inspired by a show boat that yeah went up and down our waters, so check that out. So that's yeah. what, what your latest one is. Totally, yeah, it's mm -hmm. the international edition. So the thought there was when we were all sequestered at home and itching to travel, I was going to have people write about movies that depicted other cities in the U.S. or maybe were filmed on location in these different uh, places in the U.S. And so this is the international side of things, looking beyond um, the U.S. and going abroad, looking at locations and mm -hmm. films set there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and we're happy yeah. to be participating about one of Ava's international productions. Yeah. So right. It'll be fun. Oh, right. Stay tuned for that. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And mm. gosh, I mean, yeah, I certainly invite everyone to, to visit uh, the website or read the books. I think there, there's a lot of other like MGM or uh, Ava related stars too mm -hmm. that are covered. I'm trying to think. <laughs> like, there's, well, there's we mentioned, you mentioned Robert this. Taylor. Robert Taylor. We talked about Joey and Brown. And Joey and Brown. Mm -hmm. I got Mickey Rooney, Frank Sinatra yeah. on the blog. Mm -hmm. Irene Dunn is also one that I kind of yes. think of in relation to Showboat. She played Magnolia in the previous version mm -hmm. of Showboat. The second version. Of the yeah, exactly. Of and she's yeah. someone who was also kind of raised uh, on the, the boats, on the on the river yeah. too. So she had that strong connection as well. So uh, it's and just also such great appeared fun. in the Broadway production. Too, yes, so in the Broadway yeah. version mm -hmm. as well. So a lot of fun tributes mm -hmm. to, to her as well. And. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's I'm wonderful. Sure I'm going with that, but yeah, there, there's a lot to read, though. I think that a lot of uh, just fun and interesting legacies and ways these stars are remembered. Uh, oh, and I recall you mentioned uh, the Robert Taylor portion. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's also fun to see too how these tributes manifest um, when they're not standalone museums too. Mm -hmm. So like Ava is very much the Ava Gardner like museum, and there are other places too where it might be like a library that partners mm -hmm. with like a certain museum, like the Jimmy Stewart Museum is like mm -hmm. one of the floors in the library, and mm -hmm. that's like a devoted space for them or another cases like Robert Taylor um, that's part of a historical society mm -hmm. and they happen to have pieces that relate to his yeah. life and legacy so those are like interesting ways I think to approach to like to, to doing this research yeah. in other cases it's it's trickier where I have to go to um, maybe there's like a public library or like an archive that I can mm -hmm. visit that has some of these really interesting pieces mm -hmm. or a historical society mm -hmm. um, or in other cases it's just Calling yeah. it all together really for well, research. and, and yeah. I, it's worth kind of following because I know you're yeah. you're really great at sharing. Even if some, there's something happening that you can't attend, mm -hmm. you're share, you're in tune to the community yes. yeah. and things that are going on. So your social is a great resource for folks who want to yeah. know: is there an exhibit popping up? I mean, you know, there right. was a, an exhibit I believe last year that a great friend of the museum. Um, the Peck family. We're very oh, close yeah. with the Peck family, okay. and yeah. Cecilia Peck organized an exhibit celebrating largely her mother but also her father and their influence on fashion yeah and you covered some of that and yeah. you did some posts about that um i don't think you were able to attend but you were no. able to share kind of that's going on so folks 
follow, know that if you're in the area, yeah. do this. Yeah. And there's lots of those great traveling and pop-up exhibits that yeah. happen, or museums, you know, our wonderful museum in Raleigh, the North Carolina St uh, History Museum, did an exhibit uh, a number of years ago about, you know, film in North Carolina. Mm. And they talked about all of the many movies that had been filmed here, and they also highlighted some of the stars that had been here. So while that wasn't nice. a Ava Gardner exhibit, you know, they, they mentioned that Ava and Andy and some of the other stars that have yeah. connections here. So, you know, there's always something going on like that if you're a yeah. film fan. It's just kind of finding it, knowing it, and you're a great source for kind of, you know, dispersing that information to the community. To yeah, 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 absolutely. And I, I try to aim to be a hub for that yeah. information where possible mm -hmm. because I think so much is concentrated within like Hollywood and the Los Angeles area, of mm -hmm. course, since like that's where those careers like really yeah. took off and mm -hmm. flourished. So it's exciting when something comes your way. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so when something's a little, uh, uh, when, when something does travel, mm -hmm. um, to be able to see pieces of that legacy and that collection is fun. Mm -hmm. and, I know the Rosemary Clooney Museum does yes. something similar. Oh, they have like the right. white yeah. Christmas dresses, yes. and lately, seasonally, those have been kind of traveling yeah. uh, and, and moving. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see what the plans are for yeah. this season. Well, and you have a whole yeah. section of your website about festivals yeah. and yeah. other events like mm -hmm. that. So that's a great spot. Oh, to, that's you know, yeah. Not yeah. just and, and that's where you're going to share some that's where fun about memories <laughs> and experiences yeah. from your weekend with us at the festival. <laughs> so we're excited to see that when that Thank comes you. out. So yeah, that's great. <laughs> we have so enjoyed having you here. It it's been so just a much. pleasure. Oh. And you better come back. I will. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We've had a great time. The book has um, all the books that she brought have been sold. Yeah. So uh, we really enjoyed just having her and getting to know her and stuff, but also getting a little bit of time to pick her brain mm -hmm. and all the, the information she has in there. Thank you so much, Annette, for joining oh, us. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you, Laura, for your never ending support and help. <laughs> thank you, Lamel, for just being fabulous. Oh, yes. <laughs> and totally underdressed, I might Yeah, say. yeah. We, we <laughs> forgot to see the attire, though. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I had to represent. represent. Yeah, I had to represent. <laughs> Anyway, th thanks again, Lori, oh, for joining us. I really have enjoyed having you, and thanks for bringing the book and giving us a chance to share that with some of our fans. Too. Thank That's you great. so much, and it's it's always a treat coming to the Ava Museum. Mm -hmm. I'm always blown away by the costumes and also just some of the artifacts that just came directly from Ava's mm -hmm. life too. Just you get that sweet kind of like sentimental side mm -hmm. of her, and really get a sense of what mattered um, mm -hmm. to her off script, off screen too. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just really refreshing in these museums. You get to know more about the person, more holistically so. And well, so that is high praise coming from you <laughs> since you've been to so many different <laughs> venues and stuff. I very much appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us at Ava Chats, and we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>